Right, now we're going to do five. So three, four, and six we did together, together. And then five has got three sensory divisions, three motor divisions, and two reflexes. Okay. So the three sensory divisions of the face, what is five called? Done the eye movement, the next thing you do is can you feel here? You come close to the midline, can you feel here? And can you feel here? And if they're fine, then you go on. So that's the easy part. Stay, stay close to the middle, middle because you're on the side, it, uh, it overlaps a bit. So for me. And then if the patient says they don't feel on the right side of the body, you must go and say, all right, so where do you start to feel? And if they start to feel in the hairline, it's not anatomic. Hey? They're supposed to feel only from the vertex backwards. If somebody can't feel in his face and it's from the trigeminal nerve, they won't have sensation to there, not just to here. Okay. And the sensation will change not here but in the neck, it will change on the jawline. Okay. Patients have other non-anatomic reasons for facial sensation loss. Okay doesn't mean it's not real to them, it just means they have they need other sort of help. Right. So that is the third three divisions of the third and the motor part. The most muscles of uh, the chewing muscles. So, so what muscles do we have that make you chew? We have muscles that close the jaw and muscles that open the jaw. And the ones that close is the masseter. So put your hand there on your masseter and clench your teeth, clench and leave and clench and leave. We have yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, feel the tone in the muscle on both sides, eh? And then you feel your temporalis muscle and you do the same. And you must feel, if there's atrophy on the one side, you will feel it that way. Okay. And then that's for closing. And for opening, you ask the patient to open the jaw and you try to close it. So, <coughs> um, um, I need a volunteer. Right, so for the fifth cranial nerve, we've now done. Can you smell? If you close the nostril, we, we hold something like, a, like coffee. Most people like coffee, remember? But hopefully, nobody has cigarettes. And the other side, and we do that, and then we check the nose. So for the eyes, we check the pupils, we check the vision, we check the eye fields, and we check the ophthalmoscopy. Then we check the face, look at my finger, sorry, the eye movements. The other side, back in the middle, up, down, and then back to the nose. Then we say, do you feel there? Yes. Do you feel there? Yes. Do you feel there? Yes. Bite on your teeth. Bite again. Open your mouth. Keep it open. Keep it open. Keep it open. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and then if you're unsure or the jaw goes to one side, you can say, Okay. Then you start with the with the mouth closed. Then you say, open your mouth now. And then you will see that the jaw will deviate to the side. 
you will always have other sides <coughs> with it. Something in isolation usually doesn't mean much. Right, that is five. What else do we do with five? We've got the sensation and the motor part. And we've got two reflexes. The corneal reflex and the jaw jerk. Now the corneal reflex is a brain stem reflex that we use if the patient is brain dead. It's not. So, you say you're cotton wool? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you ask the patient to look that way, and you sneak up from the side here, and you go right there and you touch the corneal there. I think I missed it because you departed with his eyelashes. <laughs> that way. And then you go right there. That's actually on the white of the eye. Look there. You must go right on the cornea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see the reaction is different. If you do it on the white of the eye, it's not so sore. Uh, it's very irritating. If you touch the, I think they call it the limbus. That's where the white of the eye, the color of the eye, come together. Okay. So the corneoscleral junction. That's where you do corneal. And you've done enough, you come from so the patient will close his eyes. Huh? So you tell the patient to look that way, and you sneak from this side and you touch the corneal scleral junction. You say, okay, look that way, and you do the corneal scleral junction. Okay. If you don't have anything, you can just blow on the eye. And if the patient is comatose, uh, and you don't have anything, it's an ICU setting, you can just blow on the eye. Blow on the <laughs> Just go on the, uh, on the eye and see what happens. Uh, but try to look for a gauze if you can find a gauze. No. Alright, and the jaw jerk? Alright, so for the jaw jerk, you put the thumb <coughs> on the chin there and you ask the patient to relax. And you say, make like so. Like, I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you relax your jaw. And you put your, put your pointing finger on the masseter because that's the reflex that you're going to do. Right. So you relax it, you put it on, and you hit from the top to the bottom. Look like so. So. Okay, so just relax your jaw and hit from <laughs> And you don't look at the lips moving, you look at the teeth coming together. Okay. Most people should not have a jaw jerk if you don't have a jaw jerk. Right, that was five. Alright, so five, if we summarize, it's the face, sensation, remember the boundaries, and then the motor part, closing and opening. If you're not sure if the patient is really weak, you can take a spatula, put it there, ask the patient to bite it, and try to pull it out, same with the other side, bite it, try to pull it out, and then the corneal reflex and the jaw reflex. Uh, you can either do them now or you can do them when you do all the reflexes just now. You start from the top and then you do the corneal jaw and the reflex right there, up to the plasma response. Okay. That was five. Now seven. Seven is the muscle of facial expression. Okay. So what we do in practice, I'll tell you what we do in practice and then what you should do in the exam. So for the practice you say close your eyes tightly. And you should bury your eyelashes if you stay. Thank you. You can demonstrate to somebody, close your eyes tightly. It's like, close your eyes tightly. Pretend there's soap in them. Okay. Right, close your eyes tightly. And then you see, it's symmetric and the eyelashes are gone. They're buried there. Then you take your two thumbs. Don't go like so. You want to do it orderly. So close your eyes tightly. And then we try to open the, the eyes with two thumbs. Right. And then say, show your teeth. Close your mouth. Then we say, close your lips. Say, not like so. <laughs> Just purse your lips. Right. Purse your lips. <laughs> and then you try to open them on both sides as well. It's just off the midline. You can't go here on the side. The mouth is not there. Don't make a bigger mouth. Okay? Just close your lips and go on the side. Right. The highest part of the seventh cranial nerve is frontalis. Hey. So, so look up. Frown up. I want to see a frown. There we go. 
And then if you want to, you can test the tone. You can test the tone in the brows. Sometimes it helps to distinguish the upper and the lower mode in your facial parts. Then the eyes closed. First tightly, tightly. Right, open them. Okay. Blow up your cheeks. Right. Close your mouth. Close your mouth, close your mouth. There we go. And then show me your glitters. Huh? There we go. <laughs> Some people can't do this. But that's the lowest part of the pseudocranium there. But sometimes if somebody has a stroke, they don't really show that the asymmetric mouth, but they do show that the side of the blood is smiles not with. So that is seven. So eye closure and remember the two thumbs and show me your teeth and you can see if it's symmetric or not and then test the closure as well. So in the exam you start at the top and say look, ah, up, 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 up. There we go. Eyes, buccal, mouth, blood is not.